So what are you guys? We're part of the Smart Women family. Hi guys, we've been getting a lot of questions on YouTube about who we are and what we do, and also questions about the MCAT. So I figured I'd take this chance to like explain as much as we can in a really brief video. Okay? So first things first, so what I want to do is to make this as painless as possible, we're going to break this up. So you'll see a question appear beforehand, and then you'll see me answer it. Just so we can get through this, and if the question doesn't apply to you, then obviously you can like get past it and get to the good stuff. So, we're a sport with testing missions and review. We're a test prep company based in LA. In fact, we're an S Corp, and we're based solely in LA, right next to UCLA, uh, over in Westwood. Some of you, though, that have emailed in saying that you've heard about us at your school. So, let me be really clear about that. We are only based in LA. So, if you've heard about us at other schools, most likely what's happened is your friend from that school has come to our course, either during the summer or the winter, when they've had a break. For example, we've been really fortunate, but um, Melissa, for instance, is one of our students that came from Yale. She came for the summer and hung out with us for that summer, and then she went back to Yale. You know, we've also had um, Samantha Hale from University of Virginia. She came to, I think, during the winter to hang out with us. Uh, Elia Popion, who's actually from Johns Hopkins, she came for a winter intensive course as well. Anika and Christian Windham, both of them from Princeton University. So they came down here separately during the summers, different summers in fact, to hang out with us and go through the course. Uh, we had Cassidy Vong a little while ago, back from Stanford, you know. So we've had people from other places come here, but again, to be clear one last time, we don't actually have classes at those places, just those students come here to hang out with us. Uh, this summer's been really, really hectic. We had, we're only localized in one place, we're in LA, but we have basically over this June and July, over about 200 students or so. So it's really hectic for me to get things going. So I'll try to do brief demos from time to time when I get a chance, okay? And we also have a couple of people from out of state. So if you are out of state and know someone and want to come in, this will give you an idea of the sort of things that we do in class. Okay, so just really briefly. Okay, so here's a quick demo problem. What is the pH of one times, of a solution that's one times 10 to the negative four molar HCl? Okay, and the answer choices might be something like this. Okay, super mellow, super easy. And you remember, just basic ideas. First, it's a strong acid, so that means it'll almost completely dissociate, and more than that, at equilibrium, it'll stay dissociated, right? So what that means is if you have one times 10 to the four molar HCl, right? And remember again, whenever they say this, because this is all they would have to say, you can assume first that it's in water, and second, beyond that, what, what does this mean? This means you have one times 10 to the negative four moles of HCl per liter of solution. Okay, no big deal. But the idea here is you got this much, this guy completely dissociates, so you're gonna get one times 10 to the negative four moles per liter of H plus, right? And then if you remember how to do the pH, it's the negative log, but the negative log of a concentration, all it's really telling you, first the log tells you to read the exponent. The negative log says take the negative of this guy. So what you're really getting is just that four. Okay, that's not what I wanna do with this problem. I wanna use this as a warm up to show you. So obviously here the answer would be four, so you would be done, okay? Believe it or not, that could be a real problem, okay? But now let's try something a little bit on the trickier end, but you'll see it's not technically tricky. It's basic stuff with a little bit of thinking. Okay? So I'll show you what I mean. So now let's try this problem now. So now I want to know what's the pH of a 1 times 10 to negative 10 molar HCl solution. Okay? And the answer choice is going to be something like 2, 3, 7, and 10. Okay? So this is a good, good example of what I mean by using common sense instead of just purely computing, okay? So if we computed this just like before, we would have gotten that the pH is the negative log, so log gives us this, the negative negative 10 is 10, so the pH would be 10, okay? And nine times out of 10, doing this procedure would be correct, but in this case, 10's not gonna work, okay? So the common sense way to do this is, look at what that says. You're taking water, water has a pH of seven, right? You're adding some amount of acid to it. Think about that for a sec. If you take water, it's pH of seven, right? And then you add a little bit of acid to it, it should become more acidic, right? There's no way you should get something that's super basic. So in this case, just computing doesn't take you the right way, okay? But we could do this with common sense. This is a tiny bit of acid, and a tiny bit of acid shouldn't make us super acidic, right? So these guys have to go. So the only option left is something like a pH of seven. And for the most part, you would be right. Well, in fact, for the test, you would be right. Okay? okay. So, not too bad, right? Okay, 
So my point here is that sometimes common sense beats up pure computation, okay? So I know some of you wouldn't like the just purely common sense way, so let's do it a slightly more sciencey way, and then after that we'll do for real, okay? But I think the common sense way is totally good for the test, and this sort of thinking we're about to do is actually perfect for the test as well, okay? In the end, we'll do it a little bit more formal, but the formal part is kind of not worth your time, okay? So let's try this out. So first, let's do it slightly more sciencey. So you know the pH, so we know that the lower the pH, right, that corresponds to what? The better the acid, and it also corresponds to the higher the H plus concentration, right? We know this in general, right? So low pH means a high H plus concentration. So what we're going to do is we're just going to focus on the H plus concentration. So do you guys agree? The higher the H plus, the lower the pH. Okay. Then let's start with this thing. So you are totally right. So the H, this guy, this strong acid, does completely dissociate. So he does give you 1 times 10 to the negative 10 H plus. Okay? And if this were it, and you read the pH, it really would be a pH of 10. Okay? But that's not all that's going on here. So, so don't forget we have another player. So it, HCl is definitely a player, but another player in this game is water. right? And so what's the pH of water? The pH of water is normally 7. But this translates to 1 times 10 to the negative 7 H plus. Do you guys agree? Now look at what you've got. Your pH is based on the total H plus, right? So what's roughly going on is you're getting 0 0.00000001. That much from the HCl. Okay, so let me take this away. This comes from the HCl. Okay. But you're also getting 1 times 10 to the negative 7 strictly from the water. 2, 3, 7. Okay, something like that. So now you're getting this much H plus purely from the water, right? So I've got two players. HCl gives you this much. H2O gives you this much. When you look at the combination together, if anything, you have more H plus than you would with water alone, right? And if water alone gives you a pH of 7 and you have more H plus, the pH you have is actually slightly lower than 7, right? Or even if you want it to round. I mean, look at this. Water gives you this much. HCl gives you this much. This is so small compared to this guy. You could pretty much ignore HCl if you wanted. Then you would get something that would look like this. But that's just water, right? And that pH is basically, or is, 7. Okay? So not too bad, right? So what are the main ideas here? Number one, the trap is you just punch through the computation and you don't think about it. So the common sense approach is best. If you have water and you add a little bit of acid, you should not get something basic. Okay? Doing a slightly more science right? What we're thinking about is it's all about the H+, right? The total H+, of concentration. That comes from two sources. One is the HCl. So this part, you're totally right. But the second is the water. Don't forget, water is a player, okay? Normally, like for example, do you remember the earlier problem we just did? The problem where we had something like compute the pH of 1 times 10 to the negative 4 molar HCl. In this problem, you purely read this off as a pH of 4. And you would be right. And roughly the way this thinking works is you still have the two players. You still have water giving you this much. But in that previous problem, you have HCl giving you this much. So in this case, the HCl is giving you most of the, most of the H+. Plus, so the pH really comes from the HCl. Okay? This is a special case because this guy is so dilute, the HCl gives you virtually nothing. And the water is giving you most of the H+. Plus. So it really is a little, a little bit less than 7, but 7 is pretty much good enough. Okay? All right, so some of you out there might have objections because this is the main idea that's going on, but you want to see it more formally. So for some, those of you that want to uber geek this out and do it for real, we can make this slightly more formal. Okay? If you want to do it really precisely, or at least a bit more precisely, we would do the quadratic on this. But trying to avoid the quadratic, let's do something like this. So the more science way to do it, which I would not push, is you're looking at the auto-ionization of water. Right? From this guy, you know, the equilibrium version, where we assume that these guys are pretty much pure liquids because it's very dilute, right? So you take these guys to be what? Activity one. Um, activity, concentration, almost the same thing. But if you're an uber geek that loves chemistry, then you know what the whole activity thing is. Okay, well, you can say concentration. Basically, same thing. Then you get something that looks like this. 
right? And you know that at 25 degrees Celsius, this guy is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. This is where you're getting that whole pH plus pOH is equal to 14. Again, if you're comfortable with this, no big deal. Okay. Uh, again, the idea is roughly like this. When this guy starts to dissociate and turn into these ions, the mole ratio is 1 mole of H plus for every mole of OH minus, right? So when you hit this magic equilibrium point, some of this will have dissociated and become X amount here and X amount here. Because whatever you have in H+, plus, you also have an OH-, minus, right? This equilibrium thing says if you look at the amount you have here and the amount you have for OH-, minus, then that should give you 1 times 10 to the negative 14. You can already see in most cases, that's where you get this whole pH of 7. Because when you solve for this, X squared is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So normally, X would be 1 times 10 to the negative 7, right? But X would be your H plus concentration. Read off the negative log of that, that's a pH of 7. Okay? The problem we just did, if you did it more formally, you just added one little bit. When the water dissociates, it gives you H plus and OH minus. So we already have that, right? But then on top of that, you had the HCl dissociate almost completely, right? So it gives you 1 times 10 to the negative 10. Okay? To do this formally, you would compute the quadratic and get this answer, but we could do an approximation. So the approximation is, you already know this is roughly 1 times 10 to the negative 7. You can see that in comparison to that, this 1 times 10 to the negative 10 is virtually nothing. So if you take this guy and add virtually nothing to him, you can pretty much ignore this, right? You've done this before. When you've done basic GCHEM, do you remember the thing called the 5% rule? The five, this is pretty much what we're doing here, something like the 5% rule. So this is so insignificant, we can pretty much ignore him. Then you solve for x like normal. So since that amount was so small, basically you can solve for x, get this answer, and that would be roughly the right answer, which is still, you can see, 1 times 10 to the negative 7. Okay? So if you did it more formulaically, or I guess more formally, right, you would get basically the same answer. Okay? But three levels to this. Number one is common sense way, totally works. Number two is visualizing what was the main science point behind this, that you have HCl contributing and also you have water. Right? Most cases you can forget water, but in this case you can't because he's a dominant force. Because this acid, this concentration of acid is so wussy. Okay? Uh, beyond that though, if you want to be more formulaic about this, you can visualize that this is what's going on. And we're making just a slight approximation here. Okay? No big deal. Uh, in fact, in a lot of the chem courses you take, they do a variant of this. They so just write it slightly differently. They do what's called charge balancing. So you set the charges equal. You do a substitution. You get a quadratic which is what you would have gotten here anyway, solve the quadratic, and then you would have gotten something pretty close to this. So remember, a slight approximation, but it does the job. So hopefully they get a feel for what some of these questions are like. The summer's really hectic because we have a lot of students in this summer, but um, you know, when we get a chance from time to time, I'll try to put up something. So, so just let us know what you want us to do. Good luck. So if you have any questions, don't forget, swartwordprep at gmail.com, attention, Yalda.